Good morning everyone and welcome to the next video in the cybersecurity space. In this video we are going to discuss what is ethical hacking. Now take this as an example. There is an organization that keeps on getting compromised or keeps on getting hacked repeatedly every month and they are at a loss of why exactly this is happening. So an employee comes up with a brilliant idea of hiring an ethical hacking or uh, hiring an ethical hacker to test the security systems. The bosses agree and the company ends up hiring an ethical hacker. Now, what this hacker does is they try to test all the security controls that the organization has implemented, all the applications, uh, maybe even the databases, and then they start giving a report. So here you can see that they are trying to test the firewall, uh, maybe fire viruses, malicious queries towards the firewall, hack the company's website, test the company's website, any applications that the company is utilizing and try to analyze the responses that they're going to get. So they're trying to emulate a hacker scenario where a hacker is trying to attack and trying to figure out the vulnerabilities and the areas for compromise uh, to the organization's infrastructure. So once the report is ready, they would be submitting the report to the organization and they would then give recommendations of how to enhance the security posture of the organization. Once the security posture is enhanced, the likelihood of the organization getting compromised reduces drastically, thus the organization becomes a lot more secure than it was before. And this is what we are going to discuss in this video. So first and foremost, we are going to discuss uh, what is ethical hacking. We are going to talk about the types of hackers. We are looking at phases of ethical hacking, common types of attacks that are possible on networks and other systems. And then we are talking about certification and job roles in the cybersecurity space as well. So what exactly is ethical hacking? Ethical hacking is locating weaknesses or vulnerabilities of computers and information system using the intent and actions of a malicious hacker. Now the difference here is the intent. A malicious hacker will try to gain something for their own uh, personal gains or try to cause damage to the other organization. Here, the intent of the ethical hacker is to identify possible flaws and vulnerabilities, weaknesses, and then try to enhance the security on those weaknesses by mitigating those weaknesses, thus preventing malicious hackers from getting access. So the intent is the complete other way around, where a malicious hacker may be looking at gaining personally from these attacks, where an ethical hacker would prevent the vulnerability, thus prevent the hack from happening in the first place. An ethical hacker is an expert who penetrates a computer system or network on behalf of its owners to find security vulnerabilities that the hacker can exploit. So the difference between the hacker and ethical hacker here is that the hacker is not authorized by the organization whereas in case of ethical hacker it's the organization themselves who have hired the services of the ethical hacker to test the security controls to test the network to test applications and find out flaws within them so that they can be fixed ethical hacker is also known as a penetration tester so the job rule here is to find vulnerabilities and to fix them so that malicious hackers may not be able to misuse them what are the advantages of hiring an ethical hacker in an organization? First and foremost, ethical hackers can emulate or simulate the scenarios that a hacker would. They have the same knowledge, might use the same tools, except for the intent. So they will be able to identify the security threats for the organization. Once the th security threats have been mitigated, the organization can actually focus on their business and increase productivity. Once the attacks have been mitigated and the compromises have been minimized, the organization can full-fledged work towards their goals, their objectives of the business and be more productive. The reputation of the company can be safeguarded. We obviously don't want to deal with organizations that keep on repeatedly getting hacked and compromise our data. We wouldn't trust those organizations with our private and personal data in the first place which means that this is going to inspire customer confidence. The customer would feel that if the organization is secure and is able to protect themselves, they would be able to protect the customer's data and customer's uh, private information as well, which is the protection for your customers or clients. So this can be advertised as by the organization saying, we have ethical hackers, we do proactive approach towards our security measures, we have uh, integrated security mechanisms in place, we are safe, we have been tested, and we can prove that we are security compliant. Once the customers come to know about 
this, customers would feel a lot more safer to deal with such organizations. After discussing the advantages of hiring an ethical hacker, let's discuss the types of hackers. The first classification is of a black hat hacker. These people are individuals with extraordinary computing skills, which means they are very intelligent. They can program quite a bit. Uh, they know everything about hacking and these guys are experts. However, their intent is malicious or destructive in nature. They would want to harm the victim and gain possibly monetarily from these kind of activities. Some of these people would do it for fun and ego boost, if you will. The second classification is of a grey hat hacker. These are individuals who work offensively as well as defensively. So at times they can, uh, for an agenda, become a black hat hacker, gain out of it, hack without authorization. And at times they can actually accept a contract from an organization to help them enhance the security of that organization. And then there are white hat hackers. These are individuals professing the same skills that of a black hat or a gray hat. They might use the same tools, possess the same knowledge, except for the intent. Their intent is not to cause harm, but to protect the organization and enhance their security skills. These are people like us. These are ethical hackers who essentially uh, try to emulate or simulate the attacks from a black hat hacker's perspective to find out the flaws and then try to mitigate them, uh, try to enhance the security posture of the organization to prevent that organization from getting hacked. And then there are suicide hackers. These are individuals who bring down critical infrastructure for a cause. The main difference between the black hat hackers and suicide hackers is that black hat hackers will try to hide their identity. Suicide hackers do not. In fact, they will claim responsibility for the attacks that they have done. Then we have script kiddies. These are unskilled hackers. They have no idea what they're doing. They may not be technically very adept, but they rely on tools already created by black hat hackers and then try to use those tools and leverage them to try to hack an organization. A cyber terrorist would be any organization or individual who are motivated by religious or political beliefs and they try to create fear by large scale disruption of computer networks. So they might attack countries, they might attack organizations to promote their political or religious causes and might create harm to the population at large. State sponsored hackers are individuals who are employed by the government to spy on neighboring countries or uh, their enemies. The Attempt is to gain top secret information that would be damaging to other governments which would enhance the security posture of one own, one's own country. Now this is not an official job profile but uh, it's a known fact that most of the governments have hired uh, hackers to spy on other countries and other organizations. Then there are hacktivists, individuals who want to promote a political agenda by hacking and defacing websites. These guys do not cripple infrastructure, they just hack websites, deface them, put their own propaganda on the face of the website uh, to promote whatever political messages that they want to uh, promote. 